Okay, so my name's Elise, and I'm going to be helping you through this uh, programming Python on your Mac computer tutorial. We'll first be learning about Idle, which is a Python programming environment, how to use its interactive prompt, how to do calculations with a fun little underscore feature, how to break an infinite loop in case you get trapped in one of those, uh, how to create and run scripts uh, using Idle, how to error check those scripts, and then how to use uh, text edit to create and run scripts. So first things first, let's open up Terminal so that we can get idle running. On any Mac computer, all you have to do is go to Applications and then down to Utilities. And then you can find Terminal. Once you open up Terminal, you'll be faced with a window just like this, except you might have a different prompt here, depending on what your username is in your computer. So to open up idle, all you do is type in IDLE and press Enter. Now, for me, the idle window popped up just behind my terminal window, but you should get yours fairly quickly. All right, so let's take a look at this. This is the interactive shell. That means that you can just pretty much type in any Python command, and you'll get an immediate response. Enter, and it prints high. All right, you can also do math in it. Two plus three, well, it's five. And our fancy little underscore feature here is uh, that you can use the previous math answer in a new equation just by representing that previous answer with an underscore. So for instance, I want to see what 6 times 2 plus 3 is. 6 times... Oops. But instead of typing out all that, I just got the answer for 2 plus 3, so I can represent that with an underscore. Awesome. If you've noticed, the text is colored in different ways depending on exactly what is typed in, and that's the usefulness of using a programming environment like this one. You've got green for strings, you've got orange for commands, and you've got uh, blue for your output. So that's a very useful feature. You can see exactly what you're typing and what the, what the program is going to do with it, what kind of data it assumes that is. You can also use the interactive shell to assign variables. For instance, my variable named v is 3 times 4. Well, it doesn't show me what the answer to that is, because instead of giving me an output, it just assigned the output to that variable v. So I can see what the variable is by hitting enter after entering v, and it's 12, as expected. I can also enter in uh, loops in this shell. For instance, for i in range 3 automatically indents for me, which is really nice. I can say print i. Well, and then I get out of it by clicking enter once more. Nice, and it shows me the output right away. But what happens if I get into an infinite loop? For instance, if I say, while well, one is greater than zero, uh, purpose equals wasting time. If I click enter on this, it's gonna run that loop and keep running the loop and keep running the loop, and I can't do anything else while it's running. And in fact, I might be a little bit scared about computer memory if I didn't know what this loop was doing. So to get out of it, all I have to do is click and hold control and then hit C. Control C, that gives it a keyboard interrupt and it just stops whatever is, is being run in that interpreting environment. That's super useful, control C uh, stops an infinite loop. Okay, so we've just got done with a bunch of this stuff. We've got the idle terminal, we've got the interactive prompt, the underscore breaking an infinite loop. So now something else you can do with idle is you can create scripts which are just files that store lines and lines of commands that all be, are executed at once. So instead of having to type it all in in here, you can just create a script and save it, and then edit it and save it, and run it over and over again. Let's do that. We're gonna go up to File, New Window, and here's our script window. So it's just like creating a text document in TextEdit or, or Word. You're going to type things in here and then see what happens when you run them. For instance, we can type in print Howdy doody, world. All right, so that's a full and complete command. We could have either entered this into the interactive shell, or we can give Python this whole file as an input and see what it gives us. So let's save that. I'm going to call it testing.py. That's very important. That means that it's a Python file, not a text file. Testing.py, so that the computer will read it as a Python execution file. We'll save it. Oop, looks like I already have one. I don't care, I'll replace it. All right, now that we've saved it, we can run it. We'll go up here to run and click run module. 
There's also a keyboard shortcut, F5. Um, if you want to run things again and again very fast, that's very handy. And look over here. In my shell, it's showing the output from my file, which is indeed the string howdy doody world, which is wonderful. I'm glad that it did that correctly. Okay, so now that we've got a script and we can run it whenever we want, how about we make some errors happen? Alright, so in this case what I did was I indented it without giving it a reason for the indentation. If you're familiar with Python at all, you know that an indentation means that you're entering a text block. You're entering a special block. For instance, a for loop, or a while loop, or an if statement, or even just a definition of a class. But there is nothing like that here, so I've indented it without any reason. If I try running it, oops, I gotta save it before I run it. Uh-oh, it found out that there's an error, an unexpected indent. It even told me what it was. That's handy. But I, my uh, check module function actually gives me that right away without having to run it. There's an error in my program, unexpected indent, and it even shows me where with this little red block. That's super useful, especially if you've got a very long script with a lot of different commands that you haven't checked all the way through. This can really help. Excellent. So now I can fix that. Oop. Got my indent taken care of. I can run it. And we've got both print statements executing just fine. Okay. So that's a good handy thing to do here. Um, in fact, er errors can often be really, really useful. Uh, let's see, if I enter x, a variable that has not been um, defined before, and press enter, this error tells me exactly why, they're, why this is not OK. There's a name <coughs> error. x is not defined. All right, so now we know that we have to define x before using it. So oftentimes, uh, instead of just looking at all this red text and going, oh no, something went wrong, you can look through the red text and find out exactly why it went wrong and go straight back to the source, which is often in your script. Okay, so we've just gone through error checking scripts. Now let's look at an alternative way to create scripts. Um, we don't have to use idle. Although it's a very handy resource, sometimes either you don't have it or you don't like it, or you just want to do the most basic thing possible which is using a text editor and running your commands from terminal. Gives you a lot of power that way. So let's get out of idle and let's use text edit to create a script. Now currently text edit, my Mac text editor is being fancy and giving me a rich text format, but I want to make that into a plain text so that it doesn't save any confusing formatting issues. All right, just plain text. Hmm, oh, and I want to take care of a couple of uh, substitutions as well. Oh, good. There's no strange substitutions going on. OK. So using this text editor, I can create a simple file such as print Wee. There's my file. I'm going to save that as, again, testing dot, or testing1.py. I'm going to put that on my desktop. Again, .py is very important. And it's also very important to know where you're saving it. You're going to have to go and actually find this file instead of just clicking a button to help it run. So save your file as a PY and know where you saved it. OK, now we can't click TextEdit run script because TextEdit is not a programming environment. It just changes text files around. We created a programming file, but in order to run it, we're going to have to go back to terminal. How handy that we already have it open. OK, now Terminal is actually just like Finder in a way, because you can navigate through all your folders and files. So right now, Terminal is in Users AirLab 4. That's where this is. That's what this prompt means. And right here, Finder is in AirLab 4. I can use a couple of commands to navigate around Terminal. LS shows me all the different file, files and folders I have in this folder. All right, so the one I want to go to is desktop. So I can say cd change directory desktop. And now I'm in desktop AirLab 4. Hooray. And that's where I saved my testing.py file. So now that I'm in that folder, I can say python run testing1.py. That's what that command means, python testing1.py. That means run that file, see what it does. And it prints wee, just like I wanted it to. Wonderful. So that's just like using idle, except you're using your direct computer command uh, 
system. And you're just editing files with a simple text editor, which every computer should have. So now that you know all of these things, I hope you feel much more elucidated. If you have any questions, of course, call us up at the Air Lab. Thanks for listening. <laughs>